Greetings to the University of South Carolina community. I'm pleased to share with you the state of the university in a video format this year. Like many lessons learned during the time of COVID-19, we found ways to do things differently and in some cases better than before. I'm excited that this video version of my report means you'll get to hear from many voices and perspectives from across our Carolina community. When I returned to the university in May, I understood that my role was to help the university navigate toward the future and to prepare for new leadership with its 30th president. I soon realized how much the higher education landscape had changed during the nearly 20 months I was gone, not only here at our university, but across the country. For one thing, many students never returned to college during COVID, some half a million students nationwide. Where did they go? What does that mean for our country? Some colleges are considering closing and others are merging due to enrollment declines and budget realities. And universities are not immune from the issues, events, and divisions that affect the world around us. There's even debate about the value of a liberal arts and sciences education and whether our curricula should be more focused on technical and professional preparation. And of course, there's the impact of COVID. This is the backdrop to higher education today, yet our purpose and mission are more important than ever. Patricia and I never hesitated when we were asked to come back. There's never been a time that we were not all in for our university, no matter the circumstances, and we're happy to be here and are enjoying this interim period very much. I'm proud to say that the University of South Carolina is successfully weathering the storms and is well poised to be a higher education leader in the years ahead. I can tell you today confidently that our university is strong and that we're moving forward. But don't simply take my word for it. You're about to hear from students, faculty, staff, trustees, and community members. They'll give their own perspectives on the state of our university and some of the initiatives we're working on. Through their eyes and in their words, I think you'll get a clear picture of why I'm confident about our future and why I believe that our best days lie ahead. I'm just so glad I made the decision to come to South Carolina. Being a student athlete here, it's amazing. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Having a family away from home is the best thing because life is going to be hard. And even no matter what sport you play, is going to be hard. So you need a group of people that you know is going to have your back no matter what. And that's what I found here at the University of South Carolina. When I was looking for a college, I was looking for quality education and affordability. Um, I did want to go out of state, so USC became a good option pretty quickly. When I'm talking about the Honors College, I usually start with we're the number one public Honors College in the country, and I think that that's very important because it gives you this like smaller liberal arts feel within a really big SEC campus. I really think that the institutional support that the Honors College gives is a lot more than what most Honors programs give, so just the number of classes, the number of advisors, the number of opportunities for study abroad research is really unparalleled. The current health of the University University of South Carolina is incredible. This past uh, fall semester, we enrolled 8,050 new Gamecock students. Of that, 16% are first-generation college students. Couple that with over the past five years, we have an increase of 62% in underrepresented minorities in our freshman class. So U.S. News and World Report has identified the University of South Carolina as the number one for first year experience. This is the third consecutive year in a row that we've received that distinction. And that's remarkable when you think about the effort that we put into the experience that all freshmen at the university receive. This past year, we received our 23rd consecutive number one ranking for international business. That is a remarkable accomplishment. Of all of our top level rankings, the one that stands above all others for me is our reputation for having the best first year student experience of any public college in the country. Other universities come to us regularly to ask us how we earned this ranking and to inquire about the things we've become known for. In fact, our students are why we're here. 
That has never been more true. Our enrollment is booming, and this fall we welcomed our second largest freshman class ever, one that set a record for its academic credentials, and that also reflects our ongoing efforts to build an even more diverse student body. And we're already on track this fall for a record number of freshman applications for 2022. We're up 13% over last year at this time. Being a university ambassador for me has been one of the most rewarding experiences here at the University of South Carolina because I'm able to not only share my experience um, that I've had on campus, but also show it to people who may not know what it's like to be a Gamecock. I'm able to give tours to people and put some of that Carolina light into a lot of people who don't really know about it. I really want to provide that experience to them that not only shows that this is a great school for academics, also a great school to just grow and to become the best you that you could be. The National Fellowships and Scholarships Office has been really helpful to me during my entire college career. I'm currently a candidate for the Rhodes Scholarship and the Marshall Scholarship, so they were able to point me in the direction of a few fellowships for um, the UK specifically that would allow me to go do the programs that I wanted to do. Applications can be very daunting if you don't know what to do with them, so the fact that we have an office here that can break that down and help you through it is an amazing feature of USC. The accelerated programs at the university, of which there are many, allow students to combine courses and accelerate the time it takes them to earn a baccalaureate degree as well as a master's of science. We have many of those across the university. The health science programs at the University of South Carolina are among the best in the country. In fact, when we talk about the number of programs that are available and the number of schools and colleges, there's only one other university in the United States that matches what we have. What you're gonna see over the next several years is development and cultivation of that area to a point where it becomes one of the most important areas that the university has to offer. Over the last year and a half, we rose to new challenges, responding to the pandemic with strategy, action, and resilience. Our faculty scientists helped pioneer a new COVID test that is now being used by other universities. Our scientists help monitor wastewater on campus, looking for the presence of the virus so we might direct more focused testing to those areas. And the spirit of cooperation was evident throughout our community, and it's still present today. All of those things are keeping everyone as safe as possible. In fact, our COVID positivity rate is far lower than that of the city, the state, or the nation. As we move into the next semester, we will continue to prioritize health and safety. This is the new normal. When I was interviewing here several years ago, I was told that to be a Gamecock means excellence. And although I somewhat knew that before the pandemic, I don't think I really fully appreciated the level of excellence that we have. I came from a very competitive, research-intensive environment, which was a wonderful training. And I was excited to kind of explore my options and see where else I could go. I interviewed at several places and really USC was the first place I felt like a family. People asked me not just about my research or what my potential was, but how I could be a part of this larger family and organization. And so coming to USC, I've continued to feel that. The pandemic has really, I think, also kind of brought that out in all of us, again, that excellence. I think being a Gamecock means not just being an excellent person in your field, whatever that might be, but it's also being a part of this excellent family. When I came to visit, I was just blown away by people's vulnerability, openness, warmness. With that same idea, these are people who are the best practitioners in their field and they're here. Also, there is such a deep institutional knowledge here at the University of South Carolina. The University of South Carolina School of Music for me was just many years ahead of what I saw even in some of the most prestigious institutions in the world. We, we want to be that shining light on the hill. Um, we want to be a, a place that embodies the best in practice, the best in research, the best in teaching and learning, and so importantly, a place that embodies a culture where all people feel welcomed, loved, and inspired. The university has been in a growth mode for a while, and, and that's something that people see as a real positive. You know, being financially strong, uh, being an institution where enrollment's up, and, and being at a place that's investing in its infrastructure uh, is key. People see the trend line moving up for the University of South Carolina, and they want to be a part of that. To be able to lead a flagship R1 institution uh, is a great privilege for you know, any person in higher education, but particularly with the University of South Carolina. Our future is visible 
from where we stand. Thanks to careful financial management and strong support from state government, we're in sound financial shape. We're sensitive to the economic environment that affects our students and their families. So I'm pleased to announce that we plan to freeze tuition again next year, holding at the same rate for the fourth year in a row. We also aim to be among the state's best employers, and to do that, we must attract and retain good employees with competitive wages. With that in mind, we plan to increase the hourly pay for employees in permanent positions effective January 1, 2022. Folks don't realize the economic impact of the University of South Carolina. And in the Midlands, that impact is probably around $3.7 billion in the local economy, over 14,000 employees, which makes the University of South Carolina an economic engine for the Midlands. The business community embraces the university and vice versa. We have an opportunity to make transformational changes with additional resources allocated to the state through the Federal American Rescue Plan. We've requested $670 million in ARP funds so the university can expand health sciences education to meet the needs of the state, improve the infrastructure in utility and information technology that's absolutely essential to the students, staff, and faculty at any world-class institution, and invest in maintenance projects that will ensure we offer the high-quality learning environment that our students deserve. Campus Village was designed and envisioned to be transformational, and it will be transformational. Almost 300,000 square feet of student living space, and housing space, that'll be 1,800 freshman beds, including food, healthcare, study space, the biggest housing project ever done in South Carolina. The Health Sciences Campus, uh, originally envisioned as an opportunity just to move the medical school from Garners Ferry Road to a new location closer to downtown and closer to our hospital partner, is now a Health Sciences Campus where we envision the medical school, other health sciences, and research all beginning there what will ultimately fulfill almost as much as 35 acres. And it becomes the central point in all of South Carolina for health sciences education, which is incredibly important. A lot of good things are happening. We've continued to add resources for our student athletes and facilities. We joined the Southeastern Conference in 1992. I came in 1996 as a coach, and it was said at that time that Maybe South Carolina is not going to fit in the Southeastern Conference. And one of the reasons was because of facilities and resources that we provided. We've had tremendous growth. We've continued to build. Our facilities are second to no one. The Ken and Cindy Long Family Football Operations Center, what we've done with our practice facilities for men's and women's basketball, a baseball stadium. Now we've opened an indoor tennis center. We've improved every facility that we can accommodate our young men and young women who play sports. That is instrumental. It's about providing a positive experience for the young men and young women you recruit to come to your university. If you ask me, the state of the university is strong. The endowment has grown almost to $1 billion. Um, probably 989 million to be exact for those individuals out there who would like to make a contribution to the, to the university to get us to that $1 billion mark. While we're focused on a bright future, we're also addressing current challenges with a continued commitment to making our university wiser, safer, more caring, and more inclusive. We want our future leaders to build on the great story of this university. I've been appointed by the Board of Trustees to chair the Presidential Candidate Search Committee. We went about a process of seeking input from stakeholders throughout the university community and the community at large. We took that information and the information we received from our stakeholder meetings and put those into the leadership profile. So when you look at the profile, those the qualities and traits that we listed there are the ones that uh, we are using as a committee to identify candidates. As a uh, student here at the University of South Carolina, I never would have imagined I would have been in a position to lead the search for our next president. It's an incredible responsibility. There's a burden that we carry as a committee, but also as a board uh, to identify the best person to lead the university into the future. 
I am serving on the President's uh, History Commission Group, Implementation Group. As you know, there was a History Commission that was uh, charged to put together the histories of the, of the University of South Carolina. How can we display, exhibit, explain, and share the histories of the University of South Carolina? The big goal is to put together the history of the university as it pertains to the Columbia culture, the Columbia history, the communities that were a part of the university before the university expanded. As we move forward, there may be naming opportunities for new buildings, considering African-Americans that were instrumental in the university's growth, as well as the city of Columbia. In the next three to five years, from a Title IX perspective, I hope that our processes and policies are cleaner, more clear to the students and to the rest of the community so that we have a better protection for everyone here. So Title IX is a federal law that applies to educational institutions that receive any federal funding. And it prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex. And this includes sexual and gender-based harassment, sexual assault, and any interpersonal violence. We want safety for our campus community and for those around. We want policy and procedures that work and that move our system forward. So we've put together this unified office for Title IX and civil rights. Underneath that, we'll address Title IX issues as well as other acts of discrimination. So we've heard the community and we're not slowing down. There's a feedback form on our website for you to give us more ideas, tell us how to do a better job, and just know that we're continuing to push forward to make this the safest community we can. What will it take for the University of South Carolina to be a model public university in the next decade? Our foundation always must be the commitment to educate our students so that when they leave us, they will be the citizens who are ready to be leaders in their careers and in their communities. I am proud of our student athletes. The experience that they have is gonna last a lifetime. Hopefully it's about a lot of winning, hopefully it's about a tremendous journey, but it's about accomplishing academic success, about getting a degree to be prepared for the rest of their life. I've been here for three years now and I just love everything about it. The university has just the best teachers that just continue to motivate us as students. I hope in the latter parts of my time here at the University of South Carolina that I'm able to impart the love that I've received through the many different areas of campus onto other people. Being a part of the leadership and moving the university in the direction that I feel it should go is very important to me. Diversity, inclusion is very much a part of where this university needs to be. I see the university only getting better. I have a unique vantage point. I've been a faculty member here for 18 years and now I'm serving in administration. What I'm seeing is a very transitional year a year where there's a lot of things that need to be done and people are working together to make that happen. There's definitely been a lot of change in the last couple of years, which is not unique to our university. Every university experiences that at some part, but there's always been that consistency of support for faculty research, which I really love. Oftentimes we're in a room and someone sets an ambitious goal. Someone raises their hand and say, well, how are you gonna do it? And what we should be asked is, what can I contribute? And if we can all take up a mindset of contributing to the vision that our next president will lay out in front of us, I just know there's nothing we can accomplish. It is a proud time to be at the University of South Carolina. The challenges are great, but so is the University of South Carolina. I'm confident that we're turning the corner into 2022 with the resources, the ability, and the vision to become more and to achieve more than we already have. We will do that together as a community, building on all we've established. Because the state of the university is not only about where we are today, it's about where we go from here. Let's get there together.